Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be with you today. I am going to address the topic of cooperation for international Arctic science. But before I do that, I would like to provide a little context, a, a little bit of US and Alaska context to put into perspective the, some of the work that is being done. I think all of us ha are very familiar with the wide range of topics in addition to ice and climate change that are all interrelating, including the rapid rate of change of our cultures, our societies, our economies, that are in many ways complicated by the rate of change that we are experiencing in Arctic areas. And of course, you have seen these slides many times this week about how rapid the change is. But I just want to take one moment to remind us, because I think sometimes we become a little numb when we look at these pictures. When we're talking about 50% less extent of sea ice and 75% less volume of sea ice since the 1970s, this is not a slight sea change. This is a monumental alteration in the cryosphere and in all of the systems, all of the ice dependent systems, natural and man-made, that exist in the Arctic. Needless to say, the way in which we can address some of these issues is through research. And I might just note that in the United States, there are a wide variety of entities that are engaged in research that help to at least understand and to the extent possible address the rapid rate of change that our economies and our cultures and our societies and our natural systems are experiencing. I remember being at the end of the IPY years in Montreal and seeing the phrase that was sort of the banner headline of that meeting, from knowledge to action, which I think brings us to the point of the research needs of the world and particularly in the Arctic region. So let's go back to the Arctic region for just a second from the US perspective. Back in the 1980s, Congress passed the Arctic Research Policy Act to bring some coordination of research policy as it relates to the Arctic into center focus. Again, that was back in the 1980s. What Congress did was identify the area that we think of, at least for purposes of this act, as the Arctic. And as you can see, it's a very broad definition, including, at least in our country, the area of the Bering Sea because of the interaction between the Bering Sea and the Chukchi and the Beaufort. That act also created the Alaska Research, Alaska Research Commission, which I chair, as well as an interagency group among the federal agencies that really focus the investment of Arctic research dollars that are focused on the Arctic. So I would just say that uh, even back in the 1980s, it was recognized that the investment that is being made by many different departments in our government really needed to be focused in a way that made as much wise investment of that research dollar as possible. And I'm happy to say that one of my fellow commissioners, Edward Itta, is with me today, the former mayor of the North Slope Borough and the former chairman of my commission, uh, Mead Treadwell, who's now lieutenant governor, and many Alaskans. And that's because, of course, the US is an Arctic nation because of Alaska. Alaska is a state that is huge two and a half times the size of Texas, one-fifth the size of the lower 48, and yet only 750,000 people. And those of us who are lucky enough to live in Alaska have been attempting for many years to increase the attention of our fellow Americans on the challenges that Alaska faces, similar to the challenges that many Arctic people, the four million people who live in across the Arctic, face. And in that process, I'm happy to say that progress has been made. In the last few years, the Obama administration has adopted a national Arctic strategy, an implementation plan to make that strategy real. Many of our departments have their own strategies 
consistent with that national vision. We have seen the Interagency Arctic Policy Working Group come up with a five-year plan for how Arctic research dollars will be spent. And as we approach the chair of the Arctic Council next spring, many of the issues that we are addressing through our chairmanship are consistent with that national Arctic strategy. I might just note that the Arctic Research Commission, which I chair, has a number of focused responsibilities that will support and hopefully help the effort that will be undertaken for the next two years. And if you want to get sort of a vision of the issues that we consider particularly important for Arctic research to address, I would suggest that you pick up a copy of our goals report or go to arctic.gov which is an important way for you to not only get access to the work that we have done, but also stay in touch with what is happening in the Arctic. And I say that that's uh, particularly important as we try to pay attention every single day to what is happening across the Arctic. If you sign up for the daily update, you will get in your email in basket, which I know is already very big, but this is going to be very useful, a daily snapshot of what is going on in the Arctic. From the standpoint of policy pronouncements, recent research, changes in what is happening, both from the, the natural systems, but also the government level, it will be a way that will provide you some additional insight <clears throat> into what's going on in the Arctic. So a few more minutes. Uh, I wanna draw your attention to the Arctic Council particularly as a very useful entity over the last almost 20 years of bringing together the Arctic science community. If you're really looking for a mechanism to provide the kind of coordination of both the science and the policy in the Arctic, there really isn't a better example. And as we move forward and strengthen the Arctic Council and invest in the programs that's, that are really focused on in the Arctic Council, I would say that this continues to be an important way of providing the kind of continuity of information, but also the areas of emphasis that are most important to the people who actually live in the Arctic. There are countless of examples of reports that have been produced over the years on everything from climate change to human health that you can find by simply tapping in to the Arctic Council website. And although I wasn't asked to do this, I do want to have this be a commercial for the Arctic Council website as a resource for research that really reflects a broad range of opinions, expertise, and international perspectives when it comes to international research cooperation. The Arctic Biodiversity Assessment, the Arctic Ocean Review, Arctic Social Indicators, Circumpolar Health Systems Review, the behavior of oil and other hazardous substances spilled in Arctic waters. I could go on and on. My only point here is, when it comes to looking for a vehicle for important coordination, this is an excellent one. Let me close by simply posing a few what I consider to be incredibly important questions as we try to take Arctic science coordination to another level. How can we synthesize what the observing networks and what all of the data that is accumulated through our various individual national efforts be better placed in a transparent and accessible way for people, whether they are in the public sector or in the private sector? I think we still have room for improvement. And most importantly, I will finish with this one. The communication of the information that is generated through our various science efforts still is invisible to many people who actually need that information and need the understanding that comes from what it is that good international coordinated science can provide us. Those are challenges that all of us need to take home with us. Thank you very much.